Good morning, everyone. It's good to see all of you. Um, this means that all of you remember to set your clocks ahead. That's good. Um, glad to see everyone. And uh, you might have noticed this morning we have a guest pastor, Pastor Mario Mayer. He, uh, he's the husband of our district superintendent. There is some information in the bulletin, and he will might say a few more words uh, before his message. So help me welcome him to Aldersgate. We appreciate him being here. There are announcements in your bulletin. Uh, are there any more that need to be made or highlighted? If you have something you need to announce, uh, please raise your hand or stand, and an usher will bring a microphone to you. Any announcements? If there are none, then please, uh, we're going to sing Morning Has Broken, page 145 in your hymnal, and also the words will be on the screen. Please join with me in reading our call to worship responsibly. The Holy One calls us to trust and pray. The Holy One calls us to take courage as we travel the path with Jesus. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Please join with me in reading our prayer of confession. Loving guide and protector of your children, when Jesus began his walk toward Jerusalem, he knew the journey could cost his life. When When Herod threatened to kill Jesus, he remained with the people, casting out demons and healing the afflicted. Facing the cross, Jesus longed to gather the people as a hen gathers her brood beneath her wings. You may be seated. 
We've come to the time in our service for the sharing of joys and concerns. If you'd like to share, please stand or raise your hand and an usher will bring a microphone to you. Well, if no one else, I do have a joy. I'm, I appreciate Pastor Mario while coming to be our guest pastor this morning. Anyone else like to share? You know, the war that's going on and I, you know, the terror and the heartache and death um, that's going on there um, in the Ukraine. I just think we should keep them all on our prayers. Definitely, we'll let's all keep Ukraine and all the people including the people of Russia, too, in our prayers. Good morning. I know none of you know me, but I'm Jane Naya. Anyway, I found out last night that a young lady, she's probably in her early 30s, they found a major brain tumor, and they just don't know what's going on. I hope to find out later this week. Her name is Barbie, and she's just a dear girl that I've known her whole life. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that prayer concern. I would like this for my grandson. He had an episode after a extra hard gym class the other day and a couple of other kids got sick. We don't know whether it's growing pains or something more serious, but prayers for all the children. Yes, keep them in your prayers, please. Hi, Sumer. Uh, two announcements. I did adjust my car clock radio today, so that's done. <laughs> um, thanks, everybody, for your prayers, your cards. It's been a long haul since December, so thank you. It's a joy to have Sue back with us. Yes, good to see Sue again. Anyone else? If there are no more joys or concerns, we'll have our pastoral prayer. Yes, good to see all of you. Let us pray. <clears throat> o oh God of wisdom, God of understanding, God of love and care, we are coming before your throne of grace and mercies to ask for your answer for all these concerns that we already share. For the joy, we praise your name. But we want to pray before you and intercede for the concern that we share, because that represent many people suffering, sometimes ammonias, sometimes people in our community, Sometimes people beyond our continent, people sometimes without hopes and faith, and we humble ask for your help for them and for us. Help us today in this time of pandemic to perceive your unseen hand in our lives and to attend to the gentle guidance of your spirit, that we may experience and feel the hope and joy that you always give to your people. We come with praise and thanksgiving as we welcome this new day, as the morning is broken. It's a new day, and we feel grateful for that blessing. And we trust that we experience it today 
truly enable us to see you more clearly, to see your love and follow you more nearly. We pray this morning for peace around the world, especially in Ukraine, for people suffering because of the war. We pray for peace in our nation, our cities, our church, our families, and ourselves. O oh God, we pray today for all children, those who are suffering a lot, facing the consequences of human confrontation. And we remember our kids and grandkids and great-grandkids. And we ask you, as they grow in years, may also grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray and ask you to guide the parents and the sponsor of that by loving care, wise counsel, and holy example, they may lead them into that life of faith whose strength is righteousness and whose fruit is everlasting joy and peace. We leave before you all this, our joys and concern and our prayers, knowing that you are a God of mercies and love. And in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. In the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our first scripture reading this morning is Psalm 27, verses 1 through 14. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an enemy and though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I asked of the Lord that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You who have been my help, do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Our next scripture reading is Luke chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me, Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it, How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Good morning, everyone. I'm greeting you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Greeting from my wife, Fabiola, who is more famous than me. (laughs) But that's okay. And Pedro and Paulina are two little ones that are going to be 10 years old in October, but they are already asking for gifts, you know, for their birthday celebration. Uh, they are sick now, so they had to be in home, and, um, and it's my pleasure to be with you. As the biography is saying, I'm originally from Chile. I came to this country about uh, 20 something, 22 years old, maybe, 20, 23 years, actually. And um, I came without English. 
and it was so difficult to find a church willing to listen my Spanglish. But uh, at the end, they gave me a church, a congregation uh, in Southern Illinois, in a little town named Beecher City. Do you know where is Beecher City? Close to Effingham, right? I was there for six years. So we became very good friends and we enjoyed the ministry together. It was difficult at the beginning. I didn't know how difficult it was for the congregation. But um, at, at, at when I was completely six years old, they gave me a, a celebration. They offered a farewell service and big celebration to say bye. And uh, <laughs> I don't know why they have a big celebration, but anyway, um, the, the, you know, the, the, the share, uh, the pastor party relations share person, uh, she asked me for help, uh, time to, to say something. And I said, that's okay, it's, you know, it's, you prepared this celebration. And she said uh, something that I never forget. She said, uh, Mario, we are so sad that you are leaving this, uh, this congregation and this community um, because you have been very good friends for us and good pastor, etc., etc. And um, she said, but uh, before you go, we want to let you know that the first two years, um, we came to church because we saw you at the altar almost on fire every Sunday, preaching and enjoying, you know, moving in the altar. But we want you to know that the first two years we couldn't follow your sermons. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, it was a lesson for me. It was a lesson because uh, I, I came, as I said, without English at all. So, it was so difficult to, to learn English. Uh, so I, 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 want invite, uh, I want to require or request to invite me for at least seven more Sundays so you can follow at the end uh, my, my sermons, okay? <laughs> Just kidding, no, don't worry. <laughs> so I don't have more presentation rather than the biography that is in the, in the bulletin, so. If you want to know more about me or about us, just feel free to, to ask. Let's go to the, to the sermon for today. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we are ready to meditate in your word. Open our hearts and ears and minds to understand your message. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lent or Lenten, second Sunday, but Lent is a season of reflection and repentance is an invitation to be looking inside our heart, seeing ourselves with compassion and truth, to be honest with us and to be clear about our brokenness and our beauty, our failings and our faithfulness. In this season, we are inviting to enter into a deeper commitment with Jesus and our decision to serve him in church, in our community, and in our home. Lenten can be used as an opportunity for example, to write a new commitment. We can, at the beginning, to make the decision, and because it's only the second Sunday in this season, I invite you just to make a decision 
Traditionally, Lent has been uh, also a time of fasting. We may fast, for example, from instead three cups of coffee, just two. In best, instead to be shopping 1,000, we can be shopping for 500. We may fast from television and go out and to contemplate since spring is almost here, we can contemplate the beautiful creation that God gave in our benefit. Let us this day commit together to keep this Lenten season as a holy time, a time to be in church, to be celebrating, to listen to this wonderful music that we are sharing this morning from the prelude, the opening hymn, the special music. Everything is an invitation for us to take up our crosses and follow Jesus. Our gospel lesson is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13. And in this passage is coming in the midst of a long series of chapters where Jesus has been teaching, sharing, eating with people, all people from around Galilee. And I think it's great to see how Jesus was willing to do it. Through this, he has a fairly cordial relationship with the Pharisees, not feeling, as their, not feeling them as enemies, but as a friends, a people, those who need the blessing of hearing the word of God. So we don't know where exactly he is in this particular passage. Because as you can see, the Gospel of Luke is not telling us about where Jesus is exactly, what city, what you know, neighborhood. But Jesus, I mean, Luke is saying only that he had been walking around Galilee. But Galilee is an extension territory from the north to the south. It's very extension territory. But we don't care for that. We had to go to the point. At this point in, in chapter 13, Jesus will continue being out of the country, uh, you know, telling people that there is, there is hopes because he came to redeem what was lost. Then that at the end, in this same book, same gospel in chapter 19, Jesus is going to be entered in Jerusalem in, in that day knowing as Palm Sunday, where everyone is going to, to say, blessed is he who, who comes in the name of the Lord. So it, it, is, it is a very exciting reading. If you have that uh, time in home, just open look in 11 and go through 13 and you see it what Jesus is doing. But suddenly in this reading that is, is kind of interruption in between what is Jesus' ministry and how busy he was doing his ministry, this, this, uh, this portion in the Bible, I mean four or five verses in chapter 13, are kind of interruption in his ministry. But with a purpose, you know, I think Luca was just pointing to what Jesus will face at the end. There is a, about here talking that his, his time will come. Dear friends, it is necessary to let you know that Herod, what is mentioned here, however, is not the Herod that was mentioned at Jesus Christ's birth. Historically, that king was died almost four years after Jesus was born. So this is his son, same name, and same purpose. Uh, his father tried to kill Jesus in killing all the babies around. Now his son is announcing that he will kill. And the people, the Galileans, they said to Jesus, you know, he wants to kill you. 
And instead of being concerned, Jesus was acting like, I don't care. I'm busy. But tell that guy, you will tell that fox, he said. Well, that is a very insulting way to refer to a king, but Jesus did that because he was interrupting what is more meaningful and more necessary, which is to know the God's will for people. Go, you go tell that fox that I'm busy. Tell them uh, I have too much going on. I don't have time for you to kill me. I cannot get that I'm busy. You know, I cannot follow his calendar, his agenda, but I have to follow mine because I have seen things very important to do. Tell him that I'm casting out demons and performing cures today and, and tomorrow. And on the third day I finish my work, then I'm going to have to leave. And then what might be the source of Jesus' confidence, he also says, tell him that, tell him this, that it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. And I'm, I'm outside of Jerusalem. I'm not in Jerusalem. Uh, maybe Jesus, of course, he, know, he, know, he knew he was safe because he is not in Jerusalem. He's saying to Herod, you don't have the power to kill me. Only the people in, in Jerusalem, they can do it. So being in Lent now, a good time to ask this, case, this question. How many prophets over the last couple thousand years since Jesus' time have been killed? Or if not literally killed, how many of them were ignored? Put off out to the merging, told to be quiet, not given any of our attention and time. How many? Prophet have the job of making us feel uncomfortable in all times, because it is their job to point out our fault, point out the places where we are not aligned with God's will where our centers of truth are not aligning with God's center of truth. That is the job of the prophet, to point out God and say, this is the way, and we are not in that path. We need to change. We need to get back on the path. But also the prophets, the prophets have that have come to warn us of an environmental change in our relationship, challenging our way of being, challenging us to include more people, to live more in God's kingdom, to be more friendly and welcoming. We are, after all, citizens of heaven, and prophets challenge us to live more into that citizenship. And so Jesus laments Jerusalem of being the city that kills the prophet and stones those who are sent to it. He's lamenting the city and then shows why he laments. One does not lament over something that you don't love or that you don't care about. Jesus cares deeply for Jerusalem. As Jesus cares deeply for us as believers in this time. He says how often he has desired to gather his children as a mother hen gather her brood under her wings. A beautiful image, a motherly image, total protection, this all embracing love to fully protect and have the people of Jerusalem completely enclosed by his protected love, the protected love of Mother Hand. He's saying, I have often wanted to bring you under my wings, but you have not wanted it. You have been unwilling. You have not wanted that love. You have not acted that way. 
you don't want to accept my love, at least I give it to you on your terms. You have a specific way that you are willing to uh, accept my love, and it is, doesn't work that way. My love comes my way, God's way, my Father's ways. There is a lengthened message in that. Something to think about these 40 days of repentance and self-examination on our journey to Easter. Where, when, in what ways are you or I myself unwilling to allow ourselves to be fully under Jesus' wing? Where have we been, when, why have we been unwilling to fully trust, trust in Christ's love? Christ's protected love, like the mother hen with her brood under her wings. What do we reject hearing? What do we reject being? What condition are we putting on this that we want to have met first that may stop us from fully knowing this kind of love. What makes us act like the people of Jerusalem? And what do we need to do to be otherwise? What do we need to do to find the faith to be willing to let Jesus do what he has so long decided to do with us? And how do we, as elders again, United Methodist Church, as a congregation, as God's together people, we as a church reject or deny or refuse to live fully under Jesus' wings by not trusting enough or not putting our hope in him. All, with, all good things to think about during Lent and during the rest of the year. Some good question for all times of, on our faith journey. And then Jesus in this laments, see your house is left to you. And I think he is looking at Jerusalem and lamenting, and he is saying here, they all think that they are in charge. So I'm going to let them to remain in charge. I'm going to leave the, their house to them. That is what they want. That is what they will have. And as we know, it will be their own detriment and their own destruction and failure, at least for many of them. Through our centuries, one of our biggest mistakes or sin, if you want to use that word, is to think that we are in charge. To think that it's up to us to decide how things ought to be, or to get things done, or to think we are sovereign over ourselves. And it is not. And we are not. We are citizens of heaven. We are citizens of God's realm. Then Jesus offered his final words. He says, you will not see me until the times come when you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And as I mentioned, Jesus does not go to Jerusalem throughout the rest of the gospel until Palm Sunday, that final week of his life, Holy Week. He finally enters Palm Sunday and that triumphal entry with the palms and the singing and the hallelujahs. And one thing that is said as he comes in is, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord as he comes into the city. And he said, O Jerusalem, 
How I have longed to gather you as a mother hen gathered his children under her wings. So today, me, as a little prophet, I have a question for you. In these difficult times, time of pandemic, turbulences, time of war and natural disasters, where are you? Are you trusting in and going to be under the wings of Jesus? Or are you still believing that you are in charge? Keep that in your heart through the rest of Lent as you journey toward Easter. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand if it is comfortable to do so, and we will sing our closing hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, page 140 in your hymnal and also on the screen.
So before you go, I want to share with you that you are facing this day, this new week, and the Lord God created mercy and a wonderful Father. It's always with us, all sinfulness. And He is going to be with us. So I encourage you to be the witness. So, in doing that, may God the Father.